Welcome back to second part of House of the Dead Overkill. But now it's actually House of the Dead Overkill. No more typing of the dead for now. Welcome, welcome and back to the third part of the House of the Dead Overkill OP. House of the Dead Overkill Part 2. <laughs> and, 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 and TJ is not here anymore. Yeah, TJ had another wedding to go to. Oh, th th this is the thing I like about the game, is that you can purchase and upgrade your weapons, so you're not stuck with the same one the whole time. Hmm. Now, what it, so, Stefan, in, in, in games like this, what do you, do you tend to just go for n uh, new guns sooner, or do you like to max out your current weapon first before advancing? I usually go for, I like, what I'm doing for this run is I usually get, like, two guns, so I can, like, switch between them, and just kind of stick with them and upgrade those. Hmm. Because the game really wants you to like replay it multiple times, you can buy all the guns and upgrade oh, totally, them all yeah, fully. Yeah. So let uh, so like right and I so I go with the the main one that we have right now, which is like the pistol, and then spoiler alert, I'm gonna get the machine gun because I like that playing. Uh, Steven, just just enjoy some of some of these cutscenes. It's fucking beautiful. Papa Caesar. Fuck Clement. you, Clement. We have, we have to get Clement in for the last part of this of this LP. <laughs> Yes. Your symptoms, I love Papa Caesar. And his accent his accent is wonderful. Wait, are the are these zombie I just realized these are zombie nurses who are like, <laughs> who are like performing autopsy. I love this. Ballistic what a name! I love the fucking dialogue, man. Collect your point blank prescription. It's fucking beautiful. It's fucking beautiful, man. And the narr the narrator's doing his best Corey Burton impression. <laughs> Ballistic trauma sounds like an Adult Swim show. <laughs> right up there with Magnum PI. Max. <laughs> one of, one of these days I'll make that show. One of these days. You can't. Dana Snyder already stole the idea. That bastard. I don't know why I listen to you, Steven, by gives tweeting him my idea for free. <laughs> Fuck you, Master Shake. <laughs> one thing, one thing I, I, I will recommend, I would say when playing this, after the first level, I would, um, especially for the handgun, you want to uh, uh, maximize the uh, reload as soon as you can. Yeah. But when you start off, the reload for the handgun is so fucking slow, you will get hit. If there was zombies near you, it takes like a good five, six seconds to reload, which can get you hit a bunch of times. So you want to you want to max out that reload as soon as you fucking can. Yeah, especially on especially on the other guns because those reloads are so slow. Mm. This music is fucking great. <laughs> I actually saved someone. So, uh, Steven, have you had any, any history or interaction with the House of the Dead franchise as a whole? I'm pretty sure I played a game or two at an arcade, maybe. They're arcade games, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's my experience. Yeah, because I think, I think this is this was the first original game for consoles, because I think previously they had just ported ones, like uh, they had ported House of the Dead 2 to Dreamcast, I think maybe House of the Dead 3 as well. Uh, yep. Uh, actually, well, Dreamcast, I'm not sure, but I know House of the Dead 3 was ported. Mm. I've never been a fan of this genre, but, um, this, this actually looks good, because, you know, it's funny and it has style to it. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And you don't have to keep putting in your quarters. <laughs> well, you, you, you do have to, to pay, like, $20, though, <laughs> for a disc. I, I got this for, like, 10 bucks. You, you can find it fairly cheap. And it's probably still cheaper than how much you would spend if you were to play through a regular <laughs> House of Dead game yeah. at an arcade. Yeah. We should say, the way, um, instead of quarters, uh, you see that your point, uh, your, uh, point list. Every time you die, you have to spend points to, uh, play some more. So, as long as, long as you're shooting everything on screen, uh, you, you really shouldn't run out of points. Yeah, and and the points are what you need for uh, like to get money to upgrade your weapons. I like how I love that the uh, the bald 
guy says, Don't touch me, you bald motherfucker. <laughs> that line just tickles me, I love it. <laughs> bald motherfucker. That'd, that'd be like me telling Stefan to not touch me because he's short. Because <laughs> I too am short. <laughs> So this so that, that was some amazing parkour. That was some, that was some parkour. So this is, this is the game that started Lost World stole from. That's <laughs> overkill. I love that it slows down the music as well. Smooth jazz, <laughs> <laughs> and they just fall off the building. I think this this is the left this is the part that like keeps reminding me of Left 4 Dead 2 because the plane ends up crashing into the top of the building. I thought they all went flying Stephen and hit the other building. So. That's beautiful. <laughs> Slow motion. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm motherfucking still alive. Everything this this guy says is, is great. So, Stefan, are there like are there any any things you don't necessarily like about this version, or is there any any pr problems you have in the Wii version that were fixed or changed for the PS3 version? I wouldn't say there's nothing was really changed. Like there wasn't any. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, downgrades to either version. Like, there's nothing really bad about uh, the Wii version in comparison to the PS3 version. It's like the PS3 version has some extra stuff, okay. but it's like, it's not like they don't do anything so much better than this game, and this game doesn't do anything so much worse than the extended cut. Okay. So it's like, it, it's one of those versions where you can, any version you play is good. I still say go. I still say go for the Wii version since that was the original. And part of the charm is that you're playing this on the Wii. Well, I, I also just think you know you, you can um, the Wii ver the Wii, you know the Wii modes had those cheap little plastic holders to to make your your Wii look Wii, like a the gun. The zapper. The Wii yeah, zapper. the zapper, which is what I'm using. Is it's fucking fun, man, using the zapper in this game. I didn't use this. I didn't use the zapper because I didn't have it on me at the time. But I'm like, I really should have. Maybe it helps. I only I've only ever used the zapper for Lynx crossbow training. <laughs> and I've ne You're supposed to use Lynx crossbow for the crossbow training. That's a good point. I do know uh oh, Stefan, it was right there. I missed it cuz the camera turned and it's a cutscene and I broke that woman's arm off. All the, the the all the all the brains really do is that they give you extra points and which again the points like give you more money so they aren't really like you, in the PS3 version all those like things that you collect like they get they unlock like concept art and like hidden movies and stuff so that's like more in, they give you more incentive to go and like search around to collect all those hidden objects while in this game it's just for points. We need, we need money because of YouTube's apocalypse. That is true. But do, does YouTube accept uh, overkill money? We're not paying them, Stefan. They're paying us. <laughs> also, all these zo all these zombies in particular remind me of the nurses from Silent Hill. Like, they move exactly the same way. Do you think getting YouTube Red is worth it? I mean, you get to skip ads, but you also get to watch amazing content like Good Game. <laughs> oh my god. I still feel so weird that that Dan Harmon produced that, and and he's he has like a little... Th little... little... He, he sh he's a character. He shows up for a little bit. And, and Dan Harmon guested on an episode of Game Grumps. And they were on an episode of Harmon Town, and it's what's happening. So is that the reason why Rick and Morty season three has been so underwhelming? Oh my, Rick, season three has been, season three has had 
higher high points, but also lower low points than the last two seasons. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, I would. I. I think the. Uh, the season three opener is possibly the best episode of the entire series. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. There's but also so the, many episodes are so and bad. The, the but also, one. Morty's Mind Blowers is probably the worst episode of the entire series. It's up there. It's, it's up there. Oh my god. I, I wouldn't say it's like the worst, but it's like. It, What's it what is. do you think is what do you think is the worst what episode is, what in is the whole the series? You know what? I wrote it down. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> you wrote it down? No, cause I was cause I was like bored one day, so I'm like I'm gonna look through and like rank all the Rick and Morty episodes. You're such a nerd. When I'm bored, I just masturbate. But what if you're bored from masturbating? Then I masturbate. True. I Master think S Stefan, masturbation isn't a thing you do. It's just a way of life. <laughs> Yes, don't insult my religion. I th I think the Rick and Morty episode I put as like my weakest, my least favorite is the uh, the Purge episode. Oh really? Because I, I just like find, I just kind of find it was just kind of like, oh, it's there. Like cause none of the episodes I I write out or write hate or think are like really terrible. It's just the ones that are the least interesting to me, and the Purge one was that. Purge was okay. Not one of my favorites. Uh, I don't know. It was okay. Yeah, the it wasn't mind bad. The mind blowers was just kind of like a oh we're doing this again. Like we've been doing this whole season. We get but it. But they but they didn't do it again. They did a different format. And plus, it's none of like I think I laughed maybe once, and it was at the very end. Same, <sighs> same. I think I think in the mind blowers, I only laughed when spoiler alert when summer comes in at the end. Yeah, exactly. You guys like, doing the, Morty's mind that blowers? Scene, <laughs> yeah, that scene made made me laugh a bit. But um, yeah, the season it's been I don't know. I, you know, I think maybe they they've hit their slump. You know, I, I'd be I'd be curious to see what happens in season four. But I don't know. It, it it feels to me about it is that they they're spending. Is they're focusing more on developing their characters to get to a certain point than actually like focusing on like the jokes in each episode. It's like we, yeah. we need to. It's like we need to keep pushing Morty like more further and further. Oh, he hates him. Oh, he hates Rick. Oh, look, Rick doesn't care. Oh, look, we're gonna keep on pushing the same thing over and over because we're leading to something. And it's like, oh, gee, I wonder what we're gonna lead to. Yeah, the jokes haven't been that. Uh... I haven't been that funny this season. Aside from again, the opening episode, one of the best it twenty is, minutes of yeah. television I've, 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 I've ever seen. But other than that, it's like yeah, okay. <laughs> the the episode right before Morty's Mind Blowers is probably it's probably my favorite episode of the whole series. The Citadel. The Citadel is so good. That that's a, no that now mm. that's some good. That wasn't that wasn't I, I didn't. I didn't find the Citadel that funny, but just in its its writing and execution, I really enjoyed it. I yeah, that's what the thing that I like about the Citadel episode is that it's amazing on a technical level. Hmm. Yeah, like on a writing like that. That's how they do like story writing done really well. Yeah, there were so many layers that I lost count. To that, episode. <laughs> that episode is like an ogre. So uh, what's happening? Is it? Is it So uh, in this uh, the, it, no, I was gonna say that the th this boss is basically it's j it's like a ghost demon and it like keeps on running all over the place and you have to try and hit it and if you screw up then it hits you. And it screams a lot. It's cool. To, so I'm gonna say, um, does it does this thing make noise from your Wiimote when it gets up close to you? Uh, it does. Yes. Okay, because I, I have I have my uh, speaker on my Wiimote turned off. So it just gets to the screen and starts like it looks like it's screaming, but I'm like, there's, there's no noise coming out from anywhere. Yeah, the, the, this this part right here, where she keeps like turning into like the random nuns, this is really annoying. I can never like figure out how I'm supposed to hit her. I don't think those are nuns. Wait, you, you think these? You think those people are nuns? Not <laughs> nun, not nuns, nurses. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of Silent Hill again. Every time, every time Stefan had to go to the doctor, you thought he was being taken to church. 
<laughs> I haven't seen any of, of the Silent Hill movies. Or is there, or is there only one? There's two, There's two, I think. And I think they're both going to be bad, I think. Yeah. The, the first movie is okay. I mean, it's it's written by the writer of Pulp Fiction, so... Qu Quentin Tarantino? Roger Avery. The Roger other Avery, writer. Roger Avery, no, Roger Avery just came up with the stories. The only credited writer for that movie is nope. Quentin Tarantino. Nope. nope, Roger Avery wrote the whole Bruce Willis section all by himself and came up with, like, a bunch of script parts for the movie. All it's just himself. Tarantino really wanted the, him to say written by Tarantino, so he stole the writing credit from him. Uh, Stefan, I think we both know Quentin Tarantino does not have an ego that big. But that, that, that's what happened. <laughs> that's the joke. Ha. Uh, this this bit is so fucking this bit is so fucking funny. <laughs> what if I fucking do? I manicured only yesterday. <laughs> no finger fucking way. There's this, there's a moment coming up. It's so like made me laugh so fucking hard. It's for you. Yo. I love when he just goes, it's for you. And he just goes, yo. <laughs> 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 that's, my, that's my favorite moment in the whole thing. It's for you. Yo. I'm sure I'm sure someone's done it, but you know, Steven, we need you to ping back Sonic movies, but the House House of the Dead movies. Just all the okay. yeah, just, just all the cutscenes. How much all the cutscenes and, and some gameplay? How much does it pay? Um, a cheese Danish. Five, it it pays five bucks a year. <laughs> oh, th th this is the part I love. It just explodes. Baby legs, I'm proud of you. Now get the <laughs> fuck out of here! Whoa, that, that, that was a nipple. I saw half of a nipple. I saw it. And he just, he just crawls up in the little, like, chair thing. <laughs> it's like the 60s bat cycle. I love it. <laughs> Oh uh, god damn I love this game. <laughs> My I I I I passed. I got a 72% 72% accuracy. It's got a C, but if it was over here I would be getting a B because American grading system. <laughs> <laughs> what is your grade what what's it take to get a B in Canada? 70s. Seven. Oh my god. They say we're dumb. You get you get below a 60 and you fail. Uh, in England, everything above 70 is an A. <laughs> <laughs> god. Yeah, our, ours is if you get below 50, you fail, which everything, makes sense. It's half. Everything below, below half, under 40 is a fail when I still failed everything. <laughs> um. It, it, uh. It's for you, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>